So did you watch Apostle on Netflix, the new film from Gareth Evans, and kind of scratch your head at the ending a little bit? Like you're like, mm, I think I get that, but mm, I don't know, it, it was a little weird. Well, you're not alone. I mean, a lot of people are doing that. I, myself even, so got to the end and went, mm, gosh, well, I don't know, what exactly was he trying to say with that? What did it mean as Thomas lays down in the grass? Now, let me start off by saying this will have some spoilers in it. So this is not a review. If you're looking for a review of Apostle, just stop right now. I've done another one. I'll put the link in the description. This though is just about the ending. So if you haven't seen it or you don't want spoilers, stop watching now. Sound good? All right. One of the points that permeates the story is that it's kind of an allegory about the environment or about Earth. You have the original three that come to the island. Now they're escaping prison and you know they're on the run but they get to the island and they encounter the goddess of the island once they realize what she does and that she actually rejuvenates the island and it is her that is bringing all of this growth and all of this prosperity to the land then they try and exploit this they capture her they hold her hostage and they force her really they exert their power over her so that they can just control it. But what happens through that exploitation, through that, that imprisoning, is that it exhausts the goddess. So she begins to wither and begins to die. And that's why everything on the island is dying, that the ground is just not producing anything. That you even see uh, the girl as she puts some, I don't know what, chemicals in it to test the, to test the soil. And it just, it starts bubbling up because it is just bad soil. And as they break open husks, it's just filled with disease. Well, that's because the goddess goddess is dying, that her her power is, is not there anymore. She's being held against her will. And really what's happening through that is that she is not able to just thrive. And so what do they do? They try animal sacrifices to her and that doesn't really work. And then they try the collection of blood sacrifices from humans. And that kind of works a little bit, but it's not a total solution because you see, even as Michael Sheen cuts his hand and puts it on there and she sucks on it and it's just disgusting, you know, things start to grow a little bit, but soon they quickly wither again. And so she, she needs something more. And I think that's where the grinder then comes in because now it's like try some of these, you know, human sacrifices but again it's not totally what she needs because it's really it's her being hampered because she is imprisoned and so everything is starting to just die when thomas frees the goddess and kills her by setting fire to her house and thus even parts of the island you see that he is truly truly at that point setting her free from her bondage and then she calls him son and I think that's a foreshadowing of that he is going to be her successor. And we see her as she puts her tentacles, her roots, whatever it is, into his head. He can see the beginning. She transfers her knowledge into him of what had happened. And I think this is truly the passing on of that torch. <laughs> he set the island on fire. Okay, that was stupid. But the passing on of the responsibilities or you know, just to care for the island, to rejuvenate it. Because he's the successor, I think that that is illustrated so well that after Thomas has been stabbed all those times and he's barely making it as they're trying to get to the boats and he stumbles for that last time and as the blood is seeping out of his hands and you see it hit the ground and the flowers start to come up and the grass starts to come up. And then as he lays down, I mean, gosh, everything grows. And then you see it entwine into him. And that was how the goddess was when she was imprisoned in that house that, you know, I mean, it was, it was all growing into her. She was part of the island. She was feeding the island. She was the one that was sustaining everything and that everything was coming from it. Has Thomas become the god of the island? I mean, we see this recognition of what is happening that Thomas has. And he looks to Michael Sheen's character, Malcolm, and he gives a slight nod. It's like a knowing nod. Michael Sheen reciprocates that with another nod that he knows. And so he understands that okay, this is, I, I guess he understands what happened, but he understands that, that Thomas is the one who is now rejuvenating the island and bringing life back to it. And so I think it becomes at that point a starting over. And you almost see Malcolm kind of sit there and observe everything. And even though it's not spelled out in that, I can imagine that he can start again too that he can bring people to this island again. And as long as he doesn't imprison 
Thomas and force him to do that, as he just lets him be, then the island will thrive and his people, Malcolm's people, can live there in peace and he can have his own little cult. Ultimately, it's a story of how power-hungry people pervert the religious beliefs in a pursuit of political power. It's the corruption of religion, of politics, and maybe both. I would love to hear your theories and your thoughts on how everything wrapped up and what the ending really meant. Did Thomas truly become the new god of the island? Was he just a new, the new god? Or did he just kind of fade into the island and that's it? Is there nothing else that happens? Let me know what you think below. I'd love to hear all of your comments. Let's have a discussion. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.